Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, did institute the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may thankfully receive the same in remembrance of him who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life. The same Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. How shall I repay the Lord? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. Precious in in the sight of the Lord. O Lord, I am your servant. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. 
in the courts of the Lord's house. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I preach in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I love this service so much. It's high drama. It's high drama. There's a bunch of things that happen only once a year, and then only so few people come. This is the service of the year where there's more people in the choir than the rest of the pews. And then so you, wonderful, faithful people who have come here on this high holy day, on an inconvenient time, on an inconvenient day, welcome. And then we remember on this day that God commands us to do radical things in our lives. That's where the Monday and Monday Thursday comes from. It's the same root word as mandate. God mandates us to love one another as God has loved us. And he also mandates us to wash each other's feet. And I know for a fact that no matter how well I preach about it or how well I invite you up to wash each other's feet, it's probably just going to be Corey and I and Richard McFarland. And... um, and then you know what? I, I bet you God is big enough to forgive you uh, for not following through with that commandment. And then so there is something so dramatic about this service, not because 
of how it ends with the lights being dimmed and the altar being stripped bare when we enter into the only time of the year where Holy Eucharist, our principal way, where we attempt to commune with God is taken away from us and we may not celebrate it until we are singing hallelujahs at the Easter vigil. It's banned. You can't do it. You can celebrate Eucharist from the reserve sacrament, which to me is kind of like cheating. It kind of goes against the whole period of uh, going without. But you can't celebrate it. You can't bless the bread. You can't bless the wine. It's gone. It's not there. The altar is bare until we are ready to celebrate the mystery of the empty tomb. And then at the end of it, it always makes the beginning seem somewhat tragic. Because we begin this service just like we have begun every other service during Lent. We say the same prayers, it feels the same way, roughly. And then it's taken away. And then how many times throughout the year, I wonder when I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning to be here for the 8 o'clock service, where I tell myself, oh, If I were not a priest, this would be the Sunday that I would skip, that I would sleep in, that I would play hooky. And sometimes this thing that is Holy Eucharist coming to church, it feels just like it's there. We can take it for granted. But when the altar is stripped bare, I miss it with my whole heart. I've never wanted to come in and celebrate Eucharist on any other Saturday except for Holy Saturday, the one day I cannot. And then in our lives as well, this service should resonate with you because you have dirty feet. I have dirty feet. I took a shower, put on clean socks, and put on some nice slippers to make sure that my feet were as least dirty as possible for when they're going to be washed. But they are. That's the point of it. Jesus says we are clean except the feet. They're dirty, especially when you're wearing sandals walking around Jerusalem all day long. And we can put on the illusion that everything is fine and normal. doesn't matter the quality of shoes that you buy. On the outside, they may look nice and neat, even trendy or beautiful. But deep down inside, we all got the same weird-looking stubby feet that hold us up all day long, every single day. And then this is the day when they are forcibly brought out in the open where someone can embrace them and wash them clean and then all of a sudden you feel seen and those facades melt away and then you go from that moment of intimacy to walking out in silence with a bare altar right in front of you. There is no great dismissal. Easter hasn't arrived yet when we live into this drama when we live into the illusion that everything starts fine, and then when we hear our cantor start chanting Psalm 22, it is as if our suspension of disbelief in our normalcy fades away and we go down to the deep, dark truth that everything isn't okay, and how can it be? We will be judged by how we treat the least of these, and we are called to be people of faith. And regardless of how well we try, and we should try hard, we will be found lacking. And in that vulnerable space, we can come to terms with that fact. And at the Easter Vigil, we will be reminded that we have hope in a savior. We have hope that we are not just going to be judged by how we have treated the least of these, but we have an advocate, someone who loves us as Christ loved his disciples. And it is in our own falling up short and receiving that love anyways that we are meant to go out into the world. 
those who stood before Christ at the Last Supper, were all found wanting. We have little tiny windows into their own failings. Peter loved to preach about his own failures and denying Christ three times. At least that's how I imagine that story survived. He decided to lead from a place of weakness rather than strength, and he was made better for it. St. Thomas uh, um, doubted the resurrection of Christ until he saw the proofs. Judas stood before there, ready to betray Christ. And then Jesus reminds them all that they are loved and commands them to go out into the world to love. And you will meet people whose sins are more apparent than your own. At least you think they are. And we are called to love them. You will be encountering people that come across as saints. People that you think are unblemished. And when their saints float to the surface and you are disappointed, you are called to love them. And that is how we will be recognized as Christians. We are called to strive for justice and peace and live in the tension between those two contrary things. But along the way, we are commanded to love one one another just as Christ has loved us. So whether you find yourselves in times of abundance or in days without, go forth and love radically. Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus sent an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, that we may recall those servants who are by following the example of our master, remembering his admonition that what will be done for us is also done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than their master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. At this time, I invite you to come down if you wish for your feet to be washed by each other. If you want to stay seated, that's fine.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from your service. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for Stephanie, for Andrew. Pray for Bobby, Joanna, Ursula. Pray for Chelsea and Caroline, Iggy and Cameron and Eric. Are there others? Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
All right, folks. So this is, we're at the very, very, very top of the roller coaster, and then all the planning that can be done has been done. What will happen will happen. The resurrection will happen. Easter will happen regardless of what happens or doesn't happen from here on out. And then so I invite you to take part on this beautiful, beautiful few days. And then by being here, you are starting at the right place. So um, if you are not aware, uh, I feel like I've been extremely obnoxious about this. Uh, but the bishop is coming on Saturday. Um, and so, uh, and then so we have Bishop Mark Stevenson, our Bishop Diocesan, like the head honcho, and the assisting Bishop, uh, Bishop Gail Harris. We get both of them uh, because we have 51 people that need to be baptized, confirmed, received, and reaffirmed. And so we have a lot of them here too. Yay, guys! <laughs> so we've got the... So, and I'm going to forget someone, I apologize. We've got the DeMarcos, uh, Jeff, Marge, Angela, and then who else do we have back there? Uh, Rachel, and then James, and then Marge, and people here, so if you can't make it to the vigil, oh, and then we have Jen Bradley in the back, our vestry person on duty. And then so uh, if you are not going to make it to the vigil, take, a, oh, and Sarah Overby, of course, and then Bill Overby, wherever he is. So I'm sure he's watching at home, right, Bill? Um, and then so be sure to take the dozen or so people we have here that are going to be joining the church on Saturday. Uh, um, congratulate them and welcome them home. Uh, so we have uh, Good Friday services tomorrow. Uh, the noon service is Stations of the Cross that will be broadcast, and you can also attend in person that starts at noon. And then we have a uh, traditional, well, it's not somewhat traditional, Good Friday service out in the grove. It's a service of absence. Do not expect any creature comforts. Bring your own chair and be prepared to sit around a fire as we remember uh, the story of the cross. Easter Vigil starts at 7 with the reception to follow, and then Easter Day services at 8 and 10. All right, we're going to make it through. All right, thank you all for being here. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
fast as melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in and gangs of 